Hey guys, it's Kat here from the Upscale Audio, and today I'm here with Rob Watts. And uh, so we had Cord Electronics UK visit us today in the shop, and they were giving us some training. And I'm so excited to have him in a video because we love Cord Electronic products. And Rob has an amazing, extensive background. He's essentially the DAC guru of the industry. Um, you're a digital consultant for Correct. Cord. And he's been designing DAC chips for a very long for time. Very long time. Yeah. Very long time. He's had his hands in a bunch of different chip designs. Used to work for a company that has. Well, we won't talk too much about it because it's got a really thick non-disclosure agreement. But yes, absolutely. Long story short, dude's killing it, and he does it. And so now we're going to talk about the Cord Dave. This product is beautiful. It's gorgeous, it sounds amazing, and I was really glad to get into the meat of things with Rob today. So we're gonna talk a little bit about it and uh, maybe talk about your inspiration and kind of what got you to this side cool. of things. Cool. Why don't you start with the chips and then we can kind of focus on all the connections and what else okay, the Dave sure. offers. So we've got, as everybody knows, this is an FBGA base right. pack. So an FBGA means that you can design your own digital hardware. So it's when I'm designing a silicon chip, and I'm designing an FPGA, the design process is pretty much the same. Field programming will get array, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, you got it. Yep. Um, and so you code up the, your, your, your design hardware. You've got complete flexibility to do things. Yeah. When you're designing a chip, you're extremely limited. Mm -hmm. So we had a, a project where they'd spent 10 million US dollars and they needed to save five cents out of the design. And they were going to cancel that ten million dollars and throw it away, unless we suddenly saved five cents. Oh, okay. And so the pressures on chip design um, is immense. Yeah. With FPGAs, you don't have that problem. Mm. You can have a huge FPGA that we, you would never be able to have those kind of resources, those computational right. resources, to put into a chip. This is your own chip. I just want to reiterate yeah, that. Cord Electronics, yeah. Rob Watts, their own chip. They're exactly. not putting an outside chip inside no, of here. Exactly. And the other benefit is that the actual conversion to analog mm -hmm. is not done on a chip. It's done with discrete components. Sick. So the discrete components are fed from a different power supply. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, digital components are completely isolated. So everything's separate and has its own exactly, yeah. purpose. So you get a completely pure performance. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about noise modulation, okay. noise floor, noise floor modulation. Um, yeah, and how we kind of control that. Yeah, so there's, there's one obvious thing is, of course, is, is isolating those, those two components, mm -hmm. the digital domain and the analog domain. Yep. Um, the other thing is the architecture of the DAC conversion process. Okay. So the DAC we've got in the side here is something called Pulse Array. Mm -hmm. And Pulse Array's got a number of unique benefits. And this is your design. This is my design. It's from 1995. Cool. Um, it solves a large number of different issues. One thing it solves is this. It's jitter immune mm -hmm. um, innately. Um, the other thing is that it's got a constant switching activity. Cool. So what happens with a normal DAC is the switching of all the components inside there right. depends on the signal. So when you've got a different change in signal, you have a different switching activity. Each time you switch a component, you get a bit of noise, you okay. get a glitch coming through. Yeah. And that changing in, in noise gives you your noise form modulation. Yeah. And it creates distortion and it creates high level um, higher order harmonic distortion right. and something we call anharmonic distortion. Anharmonic distortion is distortion that's not related to the harmonics and that is really, really nasty distortion. Yeah. The WTA filter, it's the only filter in the world that is designed to minimize these effects. And there's two aspects to it. One is a huge amount of computational power, okay. which we can improve upon when we plug in the M scaler. Um, Ooh, which cool. is something we're going to talk about in another, yeah. another video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The M scaler, we can improve on that, that, that performance. The other thing is the way the filter was designed. Okay. So to get the improvements in the transient reconstruction accuracy, I had to do thousands of listening tests. Thousands. S thousands, thousands, literally thousands of listening tests. Impressive. And the way it, way it works is that the filter design it's got five coefficients with it. And you tweak those five coefficients, you change your filter. So I had to fine tune each of those coefficients to get the best sound. And I ended up 
going to an accuracy of 10 parts per million on each of those coefficients. Okay. But to go from you know, a huge number down to a smaller number, you've got to keep on listening backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. And I have a half a dozen different tracks where I'm listening to timbre, I'm listening to pitch reproduction, yeah. I'm listening to instrument separation and focus, I'm listening to depth and sound stage. And I score each one of those factors with that particular coefficient and then improve it and, and get it down to the, where it's going to be best. And then you do that with the other coefficient, the other you know variable. And then you have to go back and recheck that that hasn't changed the first Dude, one. Dude, that so is impressive. It's, it's taken 20 years to yeah. get right. And, uh, this didn't I'm, just happen. No, no. no. The WTA is, has been around for a long time. And it's not just successful with audio files, as you know, it's successful with studios. Yeah. So when a, oh, yeah. a studio engineer listens to a Dave, they hear the original performance. Yeah. And it's extremely transparent and, you know, gives you everything that you want to hear. But it presents it in a way that is smooth and refined. It's, yeah, what natural. Else? really key thing about the chord sound, and this applies on all of my products, is variability. Absolutely everything. It will run from 44.1 to 768 kilohertz. Um, it, it'll, you know, you've got BNC inputs, you've got AES inputs, you've got optical, you've got the USB, so it will handle it. And you did mention earlier, which <clears throat> I don't want customers to get too caught up in this because it really does vary based off of your, whatever you're going to be feeding this unit. But you said the, the reference input for the digital side was going to be optical. optical. Yeah, which is contrary to what most people it say is, in the business. But I did, you know, um, it, I think it's something we should all talk about, be open with. And I really appreciate that you fed that to us on here because, you know, I want customers to feel comfortable with trying maybe a little bit of both, sure. seeing what works for them. So, you know, reference would be considered optical input, but, you know, there's a few other inputs that we can try based off of your stream or whatever you're feeding it. Absolutely. What else about this unit? Anything else that, you know, I know, can we talk about how you named it? Yeah, sure. Just a little bit, because <laughs> sure. it's kind of cool. I'm like, why is it called Dave? <laughs> so so um, John Franks, we were trying to figure out the name. And from Cord Electronics. John, he's the owner um, of, of Cord Electronics. He does all the power amplifier design, so, and he's, he's got an aeronautical background. Um, he's a clever guy. But we think, both of us, we think that the high-end audio business takes itself way too seriously. Yes. You get... Uh, a shit pile of electronics and put a fancy name to it and put a fancy box onto it and just you know so that's the reason we we go for things like hugo and yeah. a little bit of fun in, in, involved in it cool so we had the hugo name we um and we wanted something different um and he he suddenly decided well why not call it dave you know because dave actually in the uk is a fun kind of name isn't okay it? you know it's, it's, it's a it's a funny kind of thing um and he said, then said to me, "Is it like the U.S.'s Karen or Becky?" No, no, not not, no, <laughs> okay. not like that. But it's okay. it's um, you know it, it's a it's a kind of common name. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Which, which, which Karen is a little bit sort of common. Yeah. But um, and the other thing was, my dad is called Dave. His brother was called Dave. So he then turned around and said, "Well, you know, what does Dave mean?" And so I had to come up with the term "digital to analog veritas and extremis," oh my gosh. which means truth in extreme, which of course is what we're trying to do with cool. Dave. We're trying to reduce the gap of unamplified sound to reproduce sound. And this is what Dave's whole function is. Brilliant. So there's a little bit of fun in there and there's a little bit of truth. I love that story and I love what you guys do. And I like that you shared it with us. And you know, we've had this training. Um, we're really excited to talk to you guys about it. Please call us up. Let's see if the cord Dave is right for you. We are check out one of our other videos. We are going to be doing a little add-on to this, something that you can zhuzh up all your other cord products with, the M Scaler. Absolutely. And we'll be talking about that technology. But um, yeah, call us up. We've got a whole digital department. Um, anyone that wants to talk to you about it will qualify. Make sure that you, you know, this is the right product for you. And um, at Upscale, we're going to treat your system like it's ours. So thanks for watching. Brilliant. Thank you.